Cloud is no longer just a buzzword. Uh, it's a strategy, it's a delivery model, it's a set of technologies, and it's a distribution channel, um, and potentially a competitive weapon. We talk a lot at Wikibon and SiliconANGLE about how we're entering the next wave of cloud, and we all know that Amazon sort of started it off in 2006, and the developers community you know, glommed onto it. In 2008 and 2009, movement to the cloud was accelerated as people wanted to shift CapEx to variable expenses. And then we entered a new phase coming out of the economic downturn. In 2010 and 2011, this phenomenon of shadow IT came along, and certainly, Many people in this audience, companies like EMC, started to focus on the whole notion of, of private cloud, however that was defined. And then that evolved into this idea of beyond virtualization into orchestration and, and management. We think now we're entering this third wave of, of cloud, which is much deeper integration with the business, not just my mess for less, but a true business model enabling. So we think this is where your opportunity is. Um, Jim mentioned Amazon's aggressive stance and entrance into the enterprise. Uh, right into your backyard, it's both a threat and an opportunity for you. On the one hand, it's competition from a new player who's not only a gorilla, but they're also the fast mover. On the other hand, it's a huge market. There's tons of white space. No one cloud size fits all. So we have this massive customer need, we have demand for your services, um, and together the idea is that you all can collaborate with companies like EMC and fill those gaps and help transform companies' information technology operations and ultimately their businesses. So again, welcome to the panel, competing and cooperating to win success with everything as a service. Where are we in, in, in cloud uh, in terms of where customer adoption is? And it's a great question. Cloud is, has, has, as you said, moved beyond buzzword to a technology that every enterprise is, is interested in evaluating right now. Uh, you know, two years ago, our, our public cloud capability was really SMB, uh, very much developer focused. And what we're seeing now is the CIO is, is making mandates and making their bets on what their cloud infrastructure should be going forward. They're making three to five and beyond decisions on cloud technologies and, and direction. And part of that is what technologies do I want to embrace? The other part of that is what vendors do I want to be able to play a role in this? Uh, so you know, certainly the Amazon is the 800-pound is the gorilla, as you mentioned earlier, uh, that is, is challenging the ways of thinking, uh, historic ways of thinking around to delivering computing capabilities. OpenStack has, has come up as a challenger to that, that um, single mentality that everything has to be public and is giving CIOs and uh, the discretion to choose their deployment models. They now have the ability to look at a cloud and a public provider, not just Rack-based cloud. You know, HP has, a, has an OpenStack cloud, Dell has an OpenStack cloud, but also look at, do I want to deploy my own cloud in my premise? Do I want to use a third party like a, a, a Rack-based or a Red Hat or HP to manage a cloud in my environment? So the cloud capabilities, I'd say IT has more uh, discretion and, and more control over the deployment models than they've ever had. And it's creating some unique um, opportunities for various providers to get in there. You're seeing everything from appliance-driven devices to commodity uh, open compute capabilities being able to deliver via commodity software. It's a real gamut. And what we're finding is we're having to spend more time with these buyers to be able to help them really plot that course. Now, traditionally, our, our sales cycles were relatively short. We come in and we have a solution to an immediate problem. Now we're having more of a long-term architecture directional conversation. So very different place than, than we were previously. So Michael, you guys have for a long time been focused on you know solving backup and, and recovery problems. How has the cloud you know transformed your sets of services over the last several years, you know, half a decade? What's what's changed? In, re in response to that question, I think I think cloud for me, it's becoming more similar to how IT was purchased before. So for a while there Everybody was thinking maybe cloud would completely change the game, completely change the story in the sense of how IT was procured, how IT was provisioned, how IT was consumed by by the by uh, the by the enterprise. And I think I think the pendulum swung back a little bit, back to more power in the hands of IT because now now as you see that Amazon isn't the answer to everything. Amazon's the answer for some things, or or some of the open open source public clouds, etc. 
And, and when you look at private cloud, private cloud for me looks, looks very similar to the way services were procured in the past. You're, you're getting the economic benefits of the cloud, the, the scalability, the, um, the cost reduction, OpEx versus CapEx, but now, um, but now they have more control of it. You have more options of on-prem. In addition, some, some of the issues around security, some of the issues around jurisdictional issues of if you're running uh, production in, in different jurisdictions and you can't move data off-prem, you can't move data across jurisdictions. Now they're looking at different cloud. Now we're looking, especially from disaster recovery purposes, of how do we make our services available in those jurisdictions to solve those specific use cases. So bring the economics of the cloud wherever, whenever in the world uh, they're needed. Um, and so, so for us, that's really reflected the, the, the evolution from, from cloud that the Amazon can do everything to cloud of which cloud do you need for which use case. So it's transformed a portion of our disaster recovery services. So of course we're able to, for the specific use cases of Windows and Linux operating systems, we're able to um, deploy disaster recovery services now anywhere in the world. So before SunGuard services, you were really restricted to our five principal data centers because that's where we had made our principal investments. Now essentially you can consume a certain layer of our stack anywhere in the world um, uh, with, with respect to cloud recovery. So, so we've created a, an open model to where no matter where you're running your production, we can make that available for you uh, if you're running a virtualized environment. So that, that was in no way possible um, prior to the invention of the cloud. And so that that's just shows one of the one of the evolutions that we've been able to, to make in summer. All right, so uh, Kevin, in the context of where we are, I'm interested, because you have a background in, in technology and architecture, how the architecture is evolving. Much of the audience here is focusing on, on hybrid clouds. Um, how is the architectural model changing and evolving to accommodate the cloud? So I, I think that's a great question, because it follows the progression of, of where people are. Um, and you think about every client I've called on for the last three years is using cloud. Uh, frequently you go to the CIO and they don't know. Uh, and so you go back and what they're seeing is their cost in arrears. They're seeing the, the, these issues. So when, when I go out to a client, go to a client in um, you know, South Africa, and they're working with one cloud provider, and then they say, I'm working, you know, my, my infrastructure is 90% VMware virtualized, and then I'm going to work with another cloud provider, say, on the west coast of the US. And what they'll tell you flat out is they were struggling to tie the pieces together to architect uh, an integrated solution. Um, they're struggling to create the, the management because self-service is great for development and test. Uh, but when you get past development and test, there's actual business processes that you want these things done with. And, and so you find out that the huge portions of the state are not being backed up as an example, you know. Um, as you start to find out that they're really, <coughs> not pulling together an integrated solution, so they are dedicated, isolated projects, potentially driven by a business organization, potentially driven uh, within their own IT shop. And then they go to bring it back together, integrate it, sort of the role of IT, the pieces are going to come together. And so it really is changing the approach of, A, how do you define your policies? How do you run them through an automated stack so that you can deploy the same policy, whether or not I'm putting it into a public cloud, which might be perfectly appropriate for some workloads, or a private cloud um, in another environment, in which region do I want it in, so that I'm protecting my data and country rules in, in Europe, versus you know, my, my uh, the fear of the Patriot Act that, that you know, we see in Australia. And so how do I define those pieces? So what's changing is the architectural view and everyone's been working on virtualization for the last five years. It's hard stuff. So they're looking for people who can come in and provide the policy and the management across it with a consistent view of, of how you do the thing. So OpenStack is a great way to sort of start to drive uh, towards some of that. But in many cases, just for example, we built ours on VMware. Um, so I can take a client and I can say, you know, your work with that run there can run exactly here because it's built on the, on the same stack. And I have one API that I can use in every region of the world. And whether or not it's in a hosted cloud in our data center or a private cloud in your data center or a public cloud, it's the same API. So I can invest in that automation that actually lets me get my handle around those business policies. And that's where, you know, so changing the architecture. The architecture questions are less about what server was that machine running on. 
and more about how do I interface to it, how do I drive my application to cause the, the business event um, knowledge to trigger an IT event in response. And so you start looking at all those pieces and it does change how you have to uh, build it and what skills you need inside your data center. It's not the same guy who's really good at racking and stacking, right? It's somebody who starts to think through business policy and automation. And so we see a lot of requests to help them get data policies defined and then get them implemented across the entire state, cloud, not cloud, across the